Welcome to the Coach Brian Moore Show. Margaret Ann Prater, Coach Brian Moore, you kind of know the drill now. Uh, we're on YouTube on the Hartsville Tigers Broadcast Network. And also tune in to NFHS if you can't make it to J.P. Kane. And watch our guys broadcast this Friday night when we take on Center Point. Coach, got to thank our sponsors. We've got Eddie Pruitt Ford right behind us. Life Church, Agency on Main, Marmac, excuse me, Commercial Real Estate, Peck Funeral Home, Drake Eye Center, and Coleman Regional Hospital. First off, congratulations. You accomplished something we haven't accomplished here since 2018. You won your first round playoff game. Now, when we win Friday, have you, have you looked up how long it's been since we won a second round matchup? No, I have no clue. Uh, 2012. Wow. 2012. Okay. okay. So just putting it into perspective, how good does it feel to get that monkey off your Well, mind? I think it was good. I mean, I think, you know, for a momentum deal, um, you know, we've, we've referenced talking to a lot of coaches that, you know, we talked about playoff uh, wins and figuring out how to do that and winning in November. And, you know, that was the deal is to create momentum. And I go back to 2012 being at Opelika and we went and beat Pelham on the road and then we won four straight. And so, you know, it's kind of you know, what you need to do. And I think the kids were excited. Um, obviously, I thought we handled business the way we should have. I thought we dominated the game. Um, and so I was really pleased with the way we started. Well, and you got a first round matchup that looked like a first round matchup. Last year we weren't so fortunate. Right. We were basically playing a, what I thought was another number one <laughs> seed. Um, even Clay Chalkville found out this past week how important it is to take all these games seriously. So, um, what can you say about our performance and how did, you know, how do you kind of talk to him about Clay and say, hey, None of these are cakewalks. Well, it's one at a time, no right. doubt. And, uh, you know, when you get into playoff time, you know, everybody's good, especially in the second round. And, uh, you know, but I thought the matchup was good for us, a common opponent that we knew in Buckhorn. And, uh, but, again, we went out and did what we were supposed to do. You know, that's what I was pleased with. I thought we played well in all three phases. Uh, we really didn't play our old kids after the half. You know, we played a lot of young guys. And uh, they won 7 nothing in the second half. So I was really proud of them, really proud of those guys. They played six or seven JV games, whatever it was. They played a lot of Friday nights. I didn't know how many Friday nights they would get into this year with our schedule. And then to be able to play in a playoff game, man, that's huge. And that's, you know, stretching these seasons, you know, out and having these bonus weeks like this is huge for our prep. You know, our ninth graders are still practicing too. And our JV kids, it's, it's just good for us. And I think over time that stuff really – it really pays off in the amount of reps those kids get. Well, and I had a blonde moment, I think, and I asked this question off camera to your offensive guy <laughs> who said you got to ask the big boss. Okay. So I'm going to ask you because I asked a couple players, and it may just be an error. When I was looking at the stats, I was looking at receiving and passing yards, and our receiving yards – were 130. Our passing yards were 159. Okay. Did we just leave off a quarterback, Probably. or was there some sort of technical reason we can all be in line? Nope, no technical reason. <laughs> just a human error, right okay, there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Because one had 12 completions <laughs> and one had 10, and okay. I was, I was looking at it and I thought, you know, there may be a wrinkle that I don't know about, and that would be something good to talk about. I'll but have to it, check that. That so I do all that. That's okay. my deal. On Friday nights after the game, I can't sleep, so I do all the stats and everything. Now about two in the morning is when I'm putting that in, so it may be you know I may be about falling asleep. So, uh, but yeah, I'll have to check that. No, that would not be a technical uh -huh. error. But um, you know, I, we didn't throw it a whole lot. I think we threw it ten times. I think that was that was okay. it. Okay. And so, um, but we we're pretty efficient with it. Um, we hit a big one to Landon. Obviously, I know we'll talk about that. Him being the player of the game. Right. Um, but really, really happy to see the balance there. I thought you know as far as getting different kids the ball. You know, Stenna Hageman ran for a touchdown and Landon caught one. And so that was good to see. Well, and that's brought in your playbook for right. other teams' defenses. For sure. Love to see that. Uh, uh, don't talk a ton about special teams, but I think we need to address them uh, in this show because Ra had a kickoff return and a punt return, both right. for touchdowns. And then Crawford, when he kicked that 38-yard field goal, it looked like the old Crawford was back. That was good from 48. No doubt. Um, yeah, I mean, I thought I thought special teams were really good again, and they have been all year long. You know, we've only had one night where we really didn't feel good about it, and that was muscle shells, obviously, in the way that we kicked off. Um, but I thought we kicked the ball a lot of different areas. Noah Yates got the kick. He kicked two PATs and two kickoffs. I thought that was good for the future. Uh, Ty Borden went in and snapped um, late in the game. You know, he he's a kid that's a baseball kid we're usually looking trying to develop specialists and he's a guy that you know is, is skilled and can do that and you know Zeke's leaving after this year so you know we're, we're, we're working on that kind of stuff and Landon Blackwood hailed for a last you know last couple of PATs so I thought that was all good I thought our special teams really really played well. Well and let's talk about Landon Blackwood when we've asked this question over and over of who do you think is the uh, kind of unsung hero the guy that's improving that's just kind of yeah. quietly moving along all these kids have answered 
Landon, Landon, right. Landon. He, he got his shot today. He's really skilled. I mean, like he's a, he's a really good all-around athlete, multiple sports, you know. Um, for 90% of the teams in Alabama, he'd be the quarterback. That's just the truth. And uh, he could do that and has played and wrinkled in some and played there the other night some. Um, but him giving himself to the program and, you know, playing receiver and there's so much more that he does in regards to helping guys line up. You know, we, we're very, very multiple in the way we line up. And so Landon at times will, you know, have guys, you know, adjust their split or who's on, who's off. You know, he does a lot of that stuff for us as far as getting the signal from the, you know, from the sideline. He can do all that kind of stuff uh, on, on special teams, on punt block and on kickoff return. You know, he's the guy that's the adjuster when they're squib kicking. You know, he's had two kickoff returns the last, maybe three, the last two weeks, um, just to be able to handle those kinds of things. So he does so much for our team. I thought it was a great week. Uh, you know, Coach Lang finally got him in the end zone. That was huge as far as a receiving touchdown. He's had a couple of rushing touchdowns. But um, and then I thought he was the perfect player of the week. Oh yeah, De uh, definitely. And one of the kids in class that you don't understand how hard he works. He has to practice at two positions, right. and he's Constantly. impactful at both of those. It does it pregame, um, runs out yeah. there, runs a route, then goes and throws a route. I mean, he just he, he really does it all. And to have that attitude, for sure. You, you really, I know you appreciate that. Um, let's see, we got a weird week here at school. Yeah. Um, for those of you watching, you'll see this on Wednesday. It'll be our last day in school. Yep. Thursday we have a virtual day. You're all Friday. So right. what does that do with you guys in practice? Because, you know, continuity sure. is usually a big thing. We won't change anything. We'll still come in in the mornings. Um, and what we'll do is we'll come in Thursday morning, uh, have our practice, and then bring them back Thursday afternoon uh, for a short walkthrough film session. And then, you know, with our virtual day in between, teachers have PD, so we kind of got a plan around that. And we'll have our team meal, our potluck. You know, that's kind of the big deal here at Hartzell is that all the mamas get to fix all their good stuff. So we're excited about We didn't do it last week because of our sickness, you know. And right. so we avoided that to try to get healthy, and we did. And we're, we're a lot healthier this week than we were a week ago. Uh, but we're going to have that Thursday afternoon and uh, and then Friday morning, bring them in. Uh, parents are going to feed breakfast and then we're going to bring them back in the afternoon. I used to have them up there all day, any type of day off like that. But it is like it's, it's, it's tough. It's a long day together, you know, and so I want them to get up, you know, like normal, have breakfast so they don't sleep till lunch, you know, and and then go back home and, and you know, hang out for a little bit and then be back up here in the afternoon, get ready for pregame meal. And then from really about three o'clock on, everything's normal. Well, and you were talking about the potluck and, and the parent support. I, I noticed one other thing. I wanted to address it. I got to the ball game about 6.20. So you're talking 40 minutes before kickoff. We're playing a team that's three and seven. Yep. Uh, it was a, you better win this thing. Kind of. right. I looked and there was not a seat available it's awesome, in those stands. Right. What can you say about the community support that you guys receive? And I also want to make sure to plug your coach's lunch right. just keeps growing right. every Thursday. Right. Um, what, can, what can you say about that? I mean, that? that's why we're in Hartsville. You know, I mean, that's, you know, I know what it was like, you know, as an outsider seeing, you know, hearing about Hartsville before I got here and then it succeeded my expectations. I mean, they're always here. They're always supporting. We do so much during the week, you know, and, and you know, we ask so much of our volunteers, you know, and, and plug Brad, you know, doing all that and letting us use the venue Thursdays and that thing's growing and the way we push it out on social media and what you do, Margaret Ann, I mean, just helps us to really pub the whole thing. And but that's what it's about. It's obvious, you know, it's not about me or Coach Newton or any of the us. It's about the kids. We're, we're pushing our kids and trying to create the very best experience that we can for them. And Hartzell helps us do that, you know, and, and we want Hartzell to be proud too. We want them to see the inner workings of how we go about preparing, you know, on Thursday. And then, you know, obviously with with our success, it's helped our crowds and that sort of thing. But we travel great, you know, we, we go scout other games and sometimes the visiting team doesn't travel well. That never happens in Hartsville. No. You know, we, we go to the Oxford game and it was absolutely jam-packed on both sides. You know, just great, great environment. So just, just proud to be here, thankful that, for, you know, for what we have. All right, we're going to talk about center point when we come back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Pet Funeral Home is owned and operated by folks who live in the same communities they serve. Our employees are the heart of our business. The funeral home proudly employs over 30 local individuals. Currently, the funeral home is managed by Jeff Halbrooks, who has held that position for over 20 years. Our goal is simple and has remained the same now since 1929. Pet Funeral Home strives to provide genuine service from the heart. We're back with the Coach Brian Moore Show. Got a new guest. Got Coach Will Lang, he's one of our offensive coordinators and passing game coordinator, quarterbacks coach. Did I get all your titles? Yeah, that sounds right. Okay, all right. Um, great game Friday. We did pretty well. We're pretty efficient offensively. Yes. Um, how important is that to get all your guys a lot of playing time and to come out without any injuries against this Buckhorn team? 
Uh, it's huge. I mean, obviously, going forward, we got to be healthy. It's that time of the year where uh, everybody's got to be healthy. Um, so it was good for us to be really efficient. We were good in the run game. We were we didn't throw the ball much. Okay, we didn't have to. Uh, but really, at this point in the year, the you want a couple shots in there, but really, you want to control the clock uh, in the run game anyway. So it was it was good to see the run game, and, and Lincoln continues to get good reps, and, and then getting some of the young guys in to, to play. That was really nice, especially this point in the year. Okay, and let's talk. I'm going to talk with you a little bit about center point. I'm going to ask the other two coaches as well. It, known for their speed, mm -hmm. um, we're pretty much, you look at comparables who we've played, it's about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So how are you guys, you know, without giving away game plan, how do y'all address that kind of speed? What do you do to prepare for that? You know, I think it's just, we played, our schedule has helped us with that. We've, uh, we've faced a lot of speed this year. Um, Oxford was really, really fast, um, and, and we just got to understand that, that we're pretty fast as well, and in and, and practice, you know, inside we got to be sharp. We got to be sharpening each other, and then uh, our coverage guys are really good as well. So um, really, it's it's about practice and and taking it serious in, in practice and and sharpening each other in practice. And that's how we ultimately, when we get there on Friday, are ready to go. Okay, and and let's talk about that. You're talking about what leading up to Friday. Mm -hmm. We've never really gone over uh, in this coaches show what goes into game planning, what when you're watching film, thing like things like that. I mean. You know, you don't have to get into a lot of detail, but tell us a little bit about what your schedule is and what you're trying to achieve by, let's say, Thursday. Thursday's walkthrough, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, so what do we do after Friday night? Um, Sunday, so the, the main game plan gets put together in on Sunday, and it all, it essentially all is based around the run game. So we come in and Coach Prater kind of tells us uh, what he thinks it go, is best in the run game. And we fit all the passing game stuff around that. So all the RPOs where we're, we're blocking run and we're throwing stuff behind it, um, it all fits into the run game. Our, uh, uh, our pass protection, it, what, which way do we need to slide? Are they bringing pressures a certain way? And, and all that fits, again, around the, around the, the, uh, the run game. So uh, early in the week, Monday, it'll be uh, you know, third and short, basically, is our focus or the run game in other words uh, and then on Tuesday is the long period so it's lots of routes the the receivers a lot of times on Tuesday are exhausted after Tuesday um, so they'll run all the routes on Tuesday the long periods and then Wednesday is kind of everything's coming together at, on Wednesday and Thursday is just the cherry on top there so well, that's the, I see I always want to know that all right one more question then you're off the hook I've asked all these other coaches and players who's the guy that you think has, has shown the most improvement um, that you've seen with the greatest amount of growth so far this year? Oh, I think there's a lot. The good thing is there's lots that you could put on there. Um, our, our fullbacks, Stennett, Hageman, and uh, Zeke McCann could definitely be on there. Uh, but sticking with the theme of the show, Landon, I think has, has been not only – he hasn't had a ton of catches throughout the year, but the – the best part as far as calling plays is you don't have to hide him at all. He knows every every position what to do, and uh, he's our motion guy a lot of times. He's the adjuster a lot of times on, on some of the specials that we have, and uh, that he's just – I'm proud of him. He's had a really good year. So That's awesome. Well, thank you for taking time out of your yeah. day to come talk to us, and uh, we'll be back after a word from our sponsors. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. <laughs> scared uh, Ja'Kayla because I told him we had to answer in Greek and he just looked at me like I have no idea what you're doing lady you're just crazy okay all right we're here with player of the game Landon Blackwood and Landon welcome it's about time we got you out here um just start off with an easy question softball favorite moment so far this season it can be practice it can be team meal it can be anything you want to talk about your experience this season favorite moment my favorite moment was probably during the uh, it was four minute offense during practice and all the coaches started getting mad at each other 
and hearing them argue back and forth. I don't know, it was just fun. That's awesome. Getting to hear them <laughs> That's great. We'll have to have a reenactment of that one. Um, let's talk about your brother, okay? Because I know you hear, you got an older brother, you hear a lot of it. He was the de facto team leader last year, okay? So what have you taken from watching him and learn from him that made you the player that you are now? Um, just getting to watch him, he was, nothing ever really phased him. He always stayed the same no matter what was happening. He was always calm. Yeah, he, he, he duck on the water, man, or duck on the pond. Yeah, he was. Um, other sport, what do you want to play besides football? Or what do you play besides play football? Baseball. And which one's your favorite? Football, for sure. Really? Okay. So. Uh, favorite part of practice? Uh, it's probably the third downs period, just because we get to compete for dessert and stuff, and everybody starts going at it. That's probably the most competitive part of practice. I mean, I got to tell you, if I had known that dessert was such a motivator for you guys, you're not the first person that's answered that. We've had lots of, of players that dessert was their motivator for a lot of things. So it's, it's interesting. Uh, we've seen lots of improvement from a lot of players. Yes. Okay, and, and you're here which is really cool because I've asked this question of all my players of the week, and your name has come up a lot. So you can't name yourself. So who's that guy that we looked at in July and we weren't expecting to have in the conversation of this guy's really making a difference, he's showing out. Who's that guy now? Um, mine's probably Scout. Art, okay. Because he hasn't really, last year playing behind him, it was a lot different than he is now. He's gotten a lot stronger, a lot quicker, a lot better in the past year, for sure. Well, he got lots of mentions during our Offensive Line Player of the Week. Uh, yeah, I hope you watched that because that was pretty, pretty interesting. All right, that's all the questions I've got for you. We appreciate you coming out. Good luck this week against Center Point and go Tigers. We'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. Jenny Tankersley. I'm Dwight Tankersley. And I'm Rajane Hampton, and we're your agency on Main. Local realtors here to serve you. One of our team members will be more than happy to find you that perfect home. Go, Go Tigers! Tigers! We're back. Coach Burt Newton's going to talk to us about defense today, and Coach, first stat that jumped uh, off the page at me was that you guys only gave up 152 yards Friday. I don't care who you're playing. That's pretty impressive. Uh, yeah, the guys played really well. Um, they really played hard. Uh, I thought they bounced back. We challenged them last week after that Bob Jones game where we gave, I think, 500 yards um, to, you know, get back to what, you know, makes us good. And we really concentrated on us more than Buckhorn and um, had a really good, you know, we had one bust on the big run. and that, I think that was 48 of the yards. Um, it was. And uh, we didn't fit it right, but we got that fixed. And, and um, you know, looking forward to the challenge of center point this week. Well, and also, before we talk about okay. center point, two guys, I kept hearing their name over and over again, Dalton Green and Caden Worley. Can you talk about their performance? Two seniors kind of coming into their own. They've evolved. We've talked about how they've evolved all the se this season. Uh, Dalton Green is, I mean, you turn on the film, and, and he's the best nose guard we've seen all year. Um, That's awesome. Couldn't, I mean, I mean, he's, he's been great. If they single block him, he takes that center and puts him backwards. And if you run in between the tackles, he's probably going to make the play. Um, so he's had an unbelievable year. Um, so proud of him and how hard he's worked to get strong and, and, and just from where he started to where he came. I know Coach Moore talks about it all the time, but, you know, he got thrown in there as a sophomore and he didn't need to be playing varsity football. He wasn't ready, but he, but he did. And he was fine, but now that, all that work and all that time he's had on the field has paid off. And he's really, I mean, really coming into his own and, and going to help us hopefully uh, win, win a few more games. All right, is there anybody else you wanted to highlight? Uh, Caden Worley had a big night the other night. Uh, I think he led us in tackles. Um, you know, just played really hard, kind of challenged him. You know, you know teams are starting to run to his side um, because he's undersized, and it's, you know, but he's, he's stepped up and, and just did a great job. And, and um, again, uh, we'd pin him on him big time this week as well. Okay, let's uh, – I've got it. I actually have it written here, the elephant in the room. Uh, speed of center point. I've heard that from my relative. I've heard that from scouting reports. How do we address that? Or are we pretty fast? We're not as fast as they are. Um, <laughs> they're, they have, they're basically a two-headed monster on offense. Their quarterback is, you know, if you miss him and he pulls it down and gets north and south, he's gone. And he's running away from everybody. Um, 
you know, the clays, the petsons, the, you know, if, if he puts a foot in the ground and you miss him, you don't fit it right, he's going to score. And um, we know he's going to get his. We, you know, our, our big thing is we're going to try to make it go east and west. And if we do that, we're going to run to the football with 11 guys. And, and one of us might not can get them, but two or three of us will get them eventually. Right. Uh, and then seven's like a three-year start for them at running back. He's, he's really – he's fast, obviously, but um, he's a very physical kid, too. He, he, he's not afraid of contact. And so that's going to be the, the big thing is stopping them. They got, they got some good skill guys, too. Don't get me wrong. They run speed sweeps to those guys and, and throw the ball the screens to them. And so they got a bunch of guys that can go. Um, but, you know, I, I think we're going to be fine in the box. And hopefully we're going to really – I mean, this week is all about setting the edge and keeping them boxed in and not letting them get outside of us. So do these guys remind you of the one-two punch from Bob Jones? That kind of – or are they better than that? I think Bob Jones is better as a whole on offense, but those two players at seven and ten, ten's a quarterback and seven's a running back, are, are probably better than, than their quarterback and running back. And that's saying something. Well, I know Especially running the be, football. Yeah, well, look, I'm not worried about us. It's going to be execution. I'm not worried about the coaching here. Kids got to execute. I, I think we'll, you know, not worry about it. But I just wanted to hear your opinion on it. And thanks for your time. Now you got to get ready for the ball game Friday. But we'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. At Marmac Commercial Real Estate, our focus is providing service second to none. If you're looking to buy commercial property, development land, income producing properties, or a farm, call the Marmac Commercial Team. We provide service second to none. You can reach us at 256 214 2196 or 214 2227. Or you can find us on our website at www.marmatcommercial.com. All right, we're back. Coach Brian Moore show. Margaret Ann Prater, Coach Brian Moore, Center Point. Um, they're a Birmingham team. They're 9 and 1. Yeah. Uh, they're only lost. Uh, who, who did beat them? I Clay believe it was Clay. Yep. Um, I typed Center Point in here so you can tell where my mind was. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, the common opponents we had, Jackson Olin and Oxford. I got the scores right here. We defeated Jackson Olin 39-6, and they won 26-8. Yeah. Uh, they beat Oxford 41-24. We won 69-21. But that third quarter was kind of an anomaly. I, I've talked with my students about that. 35 points in a quarter, you don't right. see that a lot. Right. But so, you know, it looks really even. Yeah. Our athletes are just different. Our style of play is different. Very. So. Uh, let's talk about the matchup and also in this why you made our schedule so tough is so when we see our center points we've kind of right. seen something. Like well that. athletically you know last year we were shell shocked with Gardendale. You right. know early in that game we've talked that to death and but it's true I mean we spotted them 14 points and and so for us to play J.O. and their speed and us play Oxford and us play Gaston City and you know our region is obviously better you know winning three or four playoff games Absolutely. you know and having three of eight north teams left or from our region I think that tells you how much better we are you know and I think um you know, we did all the scheduling and everything to get ourselves prepared for this game. Um, they're very well coached. Um, Coach Bates does a really good job there. Um, he, you know, he's got some good help there, good assistant coaches. They're very disciplined and very organized. Um, and they play to their strengths. You know, they don't overdo it. They're simple in what they do, but they're really good at it. And they put guys in space with the football that are absolute dynamic athletes. And, you know, I, Comparably, I guess it would be to Rye, you know, to be honest with you. Their back is about like Rye. And, uh, He's pretty fast. That's how good he is. And then their quarterback is a dynamic playmaker as well. I thought it was interesting. Coach Cole does explosive plays. Coach Newton and I were talking about this as well. And normally it's 15 plus. Well, because they had so many, he went to 30 plus was oh, wow. the explosive play. <laughs> and there was still quite a list. And oh, so gosh. it just goes to show you, I mean, in – we, we, you know, we're talking about it with the kids. I mean, we're showing it on film. And, you know, one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be hard for us to get them on the ground. We better be two or three-on-one. -on you know, we right. better be running the football and, you know, playing with relentless effort every play. And we will. We're going to play hard as we can. And, and our kids want this to continue. You know, they're going to they're gonna lay it all out on the line for Hartsville Friday. And, uh, you know, I, I, think that, I think that we'll compete. And, and it'll be a lot of fun. The, the styles are very different. Now, we're probably the most multiple team they've seen in regards to, you know, front play and, you know, Coach Newton and them and how they bring pressures and, you know, change coverage and change fronts and slide the front and all that stuff and then offensive for us how we add gaps and play with tight ends and you know all that stuff so it's going to be a cool matchup but again the scheduling went into this with sort of this this type of game in mind okay now what uh, I looked at the weather would rain help us or hurt us or, or is it just we're you know play no matter what you know I think it's on? one of those deals where 
I think playing on grass may help. You know, they're on turf, and most of the games in Birmingham now, maybe all, are on turf nowadays. And, you know, for us to be on grass, I think, is a little bit of an advantage for us. But, you know, when it's wet and cold and whatever, you know, both teams got to play in it, you know. Right. And, and uh, so, but I think our team's ready for that. I mean, we have a lot of morning practices with a little bit, you know, a little dew on the ground, and the ball's a little bit wet. And all summer, we deal with that outside. So, you know, I think that could be an advantage. But, again, we'll have to play extremely well. We'll have to play our best game of the year, no doubt. Okay. Well, I think we will. All right, we'll be right back. You're watching the Coach Brown Moore Show. We're back with Coach Moore, and Coach, we've got our Eddie Pruitt Ford fan question of the week, or as we call it around here, the Dana <laughs> McCutcheon fan question of the week. Dana wants to know, uh, what would you say, or who would you say, is your most improved player? Shoot, man, we've had so many that have developed. Uh, you know, I heard last week with the lineman talking about Stennett. A lot of those guys talked about Stennett. I think Stennett's a, a tremendously improved player. You know, I think um, – you know, I think even Eli Tidwell is really, really improved. I mean, he had a great year last year, but that guy's a dynamic dude right now. He does so much for us. You know, some things he couldn't do last year, especially some of the explosives he made early in the year. And then you got to think up front defensively, Dalton and Dylan Green have been, you know, I know those were names all thrown out, right. but – Golly, Dalton has played. He's exceeded my expectations. He's a, he's a dude in the box right now, and he is wearing centers out and making negative plays. I mean, multiple sacks, and uh, I just I love that kid and his motor. And you know, one time he had a play against Bob Jones where he chased that quarterback down 20 yards and got him on the ground. I mean, who who does that as a D lineman? So I I just been really pleased with a lot of our guys and in, in the way that they developed and come along. Zeke McCann's another one that's had a great year. You know, with his hands, believe it or not, he's a little bit more explosive, and uh, we just had a lot of improvement. Our team is drastically better than we were a year ago. You know, we've said it all year, but we're just so much more complete, you know, and, and that has a lot to do with those kids growing up and just improving. All right, Coach. We'll be right back. Time for Play of the Week. You're watching the Coach Brian Moore Show. We at Eddie Pruitt Ford are so excited about another great year of Friday Night Lights and Hartsville football. Go Tigers! Okay, uh, this week's play of the game from the player of the game uh, is number 12, Landon Blackwood. Uh, this is a, a sudden change right after an interception by Peyton Steele. And right here, uh, we've got an outside receiver here. We're in trips. Uh, Rye and, and Landon are in, in the slot, basically. Rye runs and grabs a safety, takes him out of the play, and Landon's clean down the middle of the field. On the other side, Isaiah's running at the other safety, pulls him off the hash and Landon's clean in the middle of the field. We've been trying to get him in the end zone. Great throw, great protection, great route uh, from the player of the game. All right, and this week in Hartsville High Athletics, Thursday, November 10th, HJHS basketball is going to travel to Muscle Shoals. Bowling is hosting uh, Bob Jones and Lee at River City Lanes. And our basketball team's going to have their first game, varsity, headed to Austin. Um, Friday, November the 11th, we have center point here, and basketball is going to play Buckhorn. Games are going to be at 2 and 3.30, so you can go get your basketball fix, come back to Hartsville, get your football fix all in one day. We have an open Saturday, and on Monday, HJHS basketball is going to go to Priceville. And on Tuesday, the junior high is going to host Austin in basketball, while we have our first home basketball game here at Hartsville High School where the Tigers are going to take on Mortimer Jordan. And that's this week in Hartsville High Athletics. 